Go ahead and get started here. So, hey, everybody, I know that you guys have, uh, have been rock and rolling day one. We're in rock and rolling here. I wanted to bring somebody on here. I think it's probably many of you may not realize, but maybe the most impactful speaker for your real estate, your note business, your entrepreneurship yourself here for the next hour 15 or hour or however how long we go. And, and many of us as entrepreneurs or note investors, we're control freaks. Let's just admit it. We're all control freaks. And we often say, I got to do it my way. I got to do it or it's not going to be nearly as good. I can't let somebody else help me out with that. And that could be nothing further from the truth. And so uh, I am honored to have my friend Amy join us here. Amy Ransdell, she is the uh, the rock star, the CMO, making things happen there over at Reva Global. And I'll tell you what, when we hired Reva, we brought Reva on to help us with some things. And the, the team that you have over there, we saw exponential growth. It made my life a whole lot easier because of the things we had, Jace, Jace Lynn doing and everything like that. And so, Amy, we're glad to have you on Note Camp, man. First time around, we had Bob speak last year. Glad to have you here speak this year. Yes, no, thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Um, anytime I can speak to entrepreneurs and provide for them ways to think outside of the box for more efficiency so they can still scale, but not, you know, put more and more weight on their own shoulders and end up in, you know, entrepreneurial overwhelm. Um, I, I am that girl, right? I just have a real passion for people to do a lot or a lot, whatever it is that goal is that you have, but do it efficiently so you can still enjoy life, right? A little time freedom to go along with it. So totally honored to be here. Thank you. Good stuff. Now, um, I don't know, are you, are you pulling up uh, your slides and initially dive into that stuff? Yeah. Or let's do that real fast. Let's go, let's go through some of the right. quotes. Yeah. So. All right, let's do this here. All right, nobody make fun of my computer. Hold on, you're gonna see all kinds of messiness here. All right. There you go, look at that, perfect. So, perfect. And so I'm assuming you guys can kind of still see me at the same time. Yep, we're I good. Have, it's, I, I, the presenter slide, we never really quite know, and it kind of blocks up some of the slides, but we're gonna make this work. Um, so I'm here to actually share with you guys so many different ways that you can outsource a lot of your note buying business. I mean, if you could imagine taking all the heavy lifting off, but still have the same results, wouldn't that be great, right? I mean, really thinking about that. So I'm gonna hope to, I'm, I'm not gonna, I shouldn't say either one. I am and will open your minds to other ways to approach the business so that you can, in fact, take things off your plate and feel confident and, and assured that you'll still move the needle forward in your business, right? Um, I think that's the ultimate goal all of us have. So, um, so let's dive in to see what we can uh, can kind of learn together today. Uh, I want to show you that you can automate as much as ninety percent of the business. And one of the reasons I come to that number is because here's the thing. So this is my first like reality check for everyone. Ninety percent of what we all do can be done by phone or computer. I mean, think about it. I'm in my RV right now on my computer using my phone as my uh, uh, my hotspot, right? Like, think about it. We can go anywhere and do everything. That means that somebody else can do what you do because all they need is a phone and computer. And so that's the first thing I really want everybody to think about is that just about everything you do in the note buying business, if you think about it, you're a, you're a phone and a desk jockey for the majority of it. That means that you can hand the majority of that off. So we're going to talk about sourcing self-directed IRAs using VAs, using VAs to skip trace and find people for you, actually cold calling, contacting self-directed IRA owners, how to have, have your VA help with marketing, cold calling, contacting the banks, helping manage nurturing campaigns, follow up some all kinds of property research as well. They can literally do almost everything that you currently do and as well as you can and oh by the way i love that you said that earlier because sometimes we just get in our own way and think that nobody can do it as well as us but the truth is sometimes they can do it better because it's the only thing they're doing where we tend to be um, all over the place right so um this will help quite a bit so note investing done for you right um, here's the thing, we can outsource 90% of it, save you hundreds of hours so you can focus on income producing tasks or what we call IPAs, right? Income producing activities, those highest revenue generated generating activities in your business so that you can automate and remove yourself from the operations. So that's our goal. 
best automation is trained virtual assistants. I don't mean this lightly. And I was the poster child of many, many years getting in my own way and not outsourcing to other people. I would hold everything on my plate. The problem is law of the lid, I can only do so much, right? And there's only so much that automation technology can do for us. So what we have to do is end up relying on other people. And the best and most cost effective way is with highly skilled trained virtual assistants. Because here's the reality and another real reality check thing I always love to point out every time I present to other entrepreneurs. Think about how many things you do in a day that really is a task that can be done by a virtual assistant and understand that a virtual assistant may be somebody that you can hire for $10 on average an hour. Well, if they can do that stuff, think about it. If you're doing it, then you're holding yourself at a $10 an hour job income level. Right. And I don't know how many people look at me and say, well, I really want to own seven figures this year. But then they look at their daily life and the majority of what they're doing is ten dollar an hour work. Well, the reality is you're not going to hit seven figures in order to get there. You've got to give things to someone else. And so virtual assistants fill that bill. Right. So here's the reason why our VAs at Riva Global are unique. And I always like to throw this in at the beginning of the presentation because I want to just kind of combat a few myths right away that we have in our heads. Because oftentimes what we do is we think about, well, VAs are, you know, they're, um, um, they're from another country maybe, and they're not going to speak good English. And I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to communicate with them well. They're not going to understand what we're doing. I and mean, we have all these thought perceptions that come into our mind. And some of us are old enough to remember movies all about outsourcing and like that we have this perception in our mind that that's what it's going to be like. Well, oh, hey, I'll be honest. There are challenges that have happened in the world of hiring virtual assistants. And one of the reasons that Reva Global was founded, formed, built, all the love that's been put into this company is so that we could solve the problems that people were having when hiring virtual assistants. You know, all companies, the ones that thrive are the ones that find solutions to problems people were having. So we were having problems with virtual assistants once we got out of our own way to start hiring them and our coaching clients and people we worked with were as well. And so we set out to completely disrupt all of the industry when it comes to virtual assistants and get rid of all of those challenges. And so at Riva Global, our VAs are trained and screened. And so let me explain what that means. Just so that you guys are totally excited about our VAs. So when we get into all the creative ways to use the virtual assistants, you are none of these objections even will sit there any longer. So let's go through what these are. Our virtual assistants go through a heavy screening process. They are actually hired on our staff. These are W-2, like, like, like that type of employee for us. We are not a wholesale uh, or a warehouse of resumes, if you will. Instead, we go out and seek talent in the marketplace and we hire that talent if they pass all of our screening tests. We're looking for uh, measurements of their English proficiency, their grammar proficiency, their writing ability, whether or not they have an accent. Are they able to work in the East or the United States hours, right? And, and primarily Eastern, um, Eastern time zone. Although if you're Pacific time zone, same thing, it can be managed that way. Are they available to do that? Preferably they have some call center experience and we're looking for educated virtual assistants and very often, especially in the Philippines, education is a, is a core value that's very important to them. So they tend to be more educated than you and I, right? Like it'll, it'll, it'll really surprise you. We also profile them. We're putting them through several different proficiency tests and personality profile tests so that we are pretty certain, I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, really, that they are the right pers personality profile for the type of tasks you're wanting to have the VA do. So all of those things together helps us make sure that we have the right match for you. So when our clients come to Reva Global saying, I need a virtual assistant, we then interview you, and find out all the things that your company's about, what your core values are, and what you're trying to accomplish by using a virtual assistant. And then we go into our pool of talent and we select those sort of like match.com, if you will, for virtual assistants. And we select those that'll best match the needs that you have. That way you're not gonna run into, you know, an instant dissonance or conflict of, of service meeting what your needs are. You know, for example, if you need a virtual assistant to do cold calling for you, well, then we want somebody who's highly English proficient, neutral accent, and has called call center experience, and somebody who is like a high D, high I, and a disc profile, they really love talking to people, and they love being on the phone. 
we wouldn't want to place you with somebody who really is more of an introvert who likes to do spreadsheets and formulas, right? That would be a completely different personality. We're very aware of that. Just like we hire people in our offices, right? In our offices on the ground here in the US, we're looking for people that meet our needs. We handle all of that for you so that we're giving you two or three virtual assistants or more if necessary to select the right one. But we've done all the hard work of making sure that they're probably pretty pretty close to exactly what you're looking for. And at that point, it's just a personality match. Do you like each other, right? So really different for working with us. Now, now that you know you have these highly skilled, educated, highly trained, pre-trained VAs, and oh, by the way, I forgot to put that part in there, our virtual assistants go through a couple of weeks of pre-training so that they can even has to be placed with a client. So they're generally not green at all in so many of the different areas that you're gonna wanna hire a virtual assistant for. We put them through intense training and tested them on it to make sure that they've passed. So let's dive into some of the things that you can have VAs do for you in the note business. For example, having virtual assistants help find self-directed IRA owners for you. Like literally, you can automate this task by having them do all the research and pull all of their information literally done for you. So for example, you could have that virtual assistant access the property and appraisers website for your county or your, your state, your county, your municipality, and find and research all of those properties that closed where the loan was obviously to somebody with an IRA, right? They can connect with those people, look them up, get all of their contact information and put that for you in a spreadsheet. Taking it a step further, they can actually skip trace to find deep, deeper detailed information for how to reach them. How about having them source on LinkedIn, right? We have them go and source on LinkedIn and they're looking for certain types of, of keywords and certain searches and so forth to connect with people who likely have some sort of an IRA. Maybe it's not self-directed yet, but they definitely have an IRA and it's somebody that could be somebody we might want to work with. If they're investing, right, then we're looking for that directly. So we know they already are somebody who does note investing. We use a tool called Octopus to help us scrape those leads and follow up with them. And it's a perfect task to have your VA do for you. Those are just, you know, some ideas, right? So could you imagine having them do all that research for you? I mean, how many of you are doing that for yourselves right now? How many of you, how many hours a week or month or quarter are you spending yourself looking for people who are potentially already have self-directed IRAs, which make good, good investors, or and or people who have honest, obviously are already in the note business, right? Um, doing all that research for you is powerful. Skip tracing done for you, same thing. You can have the skip your VAs do all of the research to find the owners, compile all of that, put them into your CRM for you and start dripping on them, right? And with tools like ringless voicemail and text message marketing and, and drip automations for emails, all kinds of work can be being done to outreach to people and follow up with them. Same thing with contacting them. Imagine them calling people for you. Can they cold call and follow a process and script? Absolutely. And why wouldn't you, right? They can follow up with emails, direct mails, all kinds of things to connect you with everyone. And when they reach the ones that are ready to transact, ready to talk to you about doing business together, those warm and those hot ones, how about this? They direct connect you and they handle all the other ones. So you're only talking to those who are ready to do business. They can schedule appointments for you and notify you. They can even gauge motivation, right? We use virtual assistants for every part of our business. We happen to be talking today about note investing, but I'll tell you what, I'm using virtual assistants to do the same thing for me for sellers, for buyers, for private lenders, for um, contractors, for uh, tenant screening, for, I mean, I, I can go on and on and on. We're literally doing the same process. One of the reasons I'm sitting in an RV today is because I can because I have virtual assistants helping uh, guide the process in my business. And I, don't, I didn't share this and I know it's in my bio, but I'm a broker, I run a real estate brokerage. I also run a full-time investment team. We actively invest in volume. So we have a lot of flow happening through our businesses in addition to Reva Global and in addition to my coaching program. So all that together right, requires having virtual assistants to actually automate that for us or we probably wouldn't be able to scale at the rate that we are so consider that as you're thinking about these ideas what are all the things that vas could actually be doing for you here's an example of an email that could be sent by a va straight to um the the, the 
um, excuse me, straight to the to the possible prospect, right? Provide all the reasons. They could provide background, all kinds of things, and we're create a call to action to work with you. Again, fully automated. Having virtual assistants cold call for you is awesome. We have virtual assistants cold call for us in so many different categories. They're doing all that initial outbound, which gets rid of all of the ones where we'd actually never connect or phone numbers don't work, or they're actually, you know, that they're no longer doing whatever it is that we're wanting to do business with them now. The VA is screening all of that out so that myself and our lead acquisition managers and our lead investment managers are only talking to the people who are ready to transact, right? So I love this. According to the study by Harvard Business, you're nearly seven times likely to have a meaningful conversation with a key decision maker. But isn't it powerful if your VA is doing all the work to get rid of all the stuff to get you to the decision maker? Because you guys can get burned out and spend way, way too much time trying to do that yourself. Pre-built scripts ready to go. They can follow everything you want them to do. Your inbound scripts, your email scripts, your response scripts, elevator scripts. I know that uh, Scott has a whole lot of resources that he works with those of you um, here in this program to have. All of that can be implemented using trained virtual assistants. How about you know, one, of the beautiful, you know, one of the beautiful things, Amy, is people, if you're, you're watching this, uh, over a year ago, Bob and I and the VA team over there sat down and put this stuff yes. together for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally taking what I teach the scripts, the, the sample emails, the sample text messages, the forms, who to call, that kind of stuff. If you've been through one of my virtual workshops before, you see me talk about that. But you don't want to, you want to not do it yourself, not DIY. You want to DFY, ladies and gentlemen. Do and it this for is, you. Exactly. So if you're working a full time JOB, most people are like, well, I don't have any time to spend on my business because I only have five hours or 10 hours. You're thinking small when you could outsource this to somebody to do it during the day. And imagine duplicating yourself, tripling yourself, 10xing yourself by a whole team of VAs doing it for you. And Scott's right. So I mentioned earlier that we do all this pre-training with the virtual assistants. All of this stuff that Scott gives you, all of these resources, amazing resources that he's helping you kind of, you know, break the learning curve and push you forward faster, he's provided those resources to us. So inside our pre-training system, virtual assistants, if you tell our intake team that you're looking to bring on virtual assistants specific for note investing and specifically with Scott Carson, then we will make sure that the virtual assistant has gone through all of the resource trainings for this program. Like we're going to make sure that they actually have, have, have they studied it? Have, do they, they have access to it? Um, and so they have, then for you, they're not green. Like they actually know what your intent is and the stuff that you're likely going to be using. It doesn't mean that you might not have your own things that you create and you also give to the VAs to do, but you've cut so many hours and so much stress off the process of getting the VA ramped up, right? Because they're already, I mean, they're already, you know, 10 miles down the road with you um, into the process because they've gone through the pre-training, they understand the intent of what you're doing and they've seen the very resources that you're going to want to use huge benefit for you. Um, I love having virtual assistants contact banks. Now we know that there's a whole lot of a whole lot that goes on there to try to find the banks. I, I, we just recently sold a note to a bank, right? And so we are looking to talk to those banks. Well, again, a virtual assistant, an educated, highly trained and highly skilled virtual assistant can call those banks, follow your script, engage motivation for you. Again, helping you 10X yourself at least duplicate yourself, if anything, right? Or and or those of you that really just want to do other businesses or have a job to be able to have someone doing it for you. They can update everything for you. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I can, I'm going to tell you guys again, I'm literally sitting in this RV and as I sit here, <laughs> I have some of these things happening for me by trained virtual assistants in this program. Um, we provide scripts. There's the scripts, again, resources that are all available to you through Scott Carson's program. These are all things that are being provided to the virtual assistants. They understand this. They've seen these scripts before. They understand what to say. You're going to be just filling in the blanks about your own personal company as far as elevator pitch, almost everything else. They're following your process that you follow with this program. Nurturing campaigns, same thing. They can be helping you automate the entire process of follow-ups and nurturing and hey by the way guys 
all the money's in the nurturing, right? I mean, what's the cliche phrase that the, the gold's in the follow-up or the money's in the follow-up? It is so absolutely true. But the reality is we sometimes just don't have the time in our own business to do that. And that's the one thing that we'll oftentimes set to the side or procrastinate on because we wanna put our energy and focus to other parts of our business, the other reactionary parts of our business that maybe can't be automated or outsourced. And so that very important that very, very important follow up activity isn't happening consistently for our business. Your answer to consistency is having a virtual assistant that that's all they do. Like literally, can you imagine all day long someone's doing follow up calls, nurture calls on all ends of your business? Huge for, for moving the needle forward. All the scripts for leaving voicemails, for example, can a virtual assistant absolutely say the script? Yes. <laughs> okay. As well as you can, and maybe better because they're going to practice leaving this voicemail script over and over again and doing all those follow up. All right. Stats on follow ups, right? I always love this. 2% of sales close at the initial meeting, right? But according to marketing, 44% of sales reps, they never follow up after one rejection. 22 stop after 22% stop after two, 14% after three, 12% stop after four, right? That means that 92% of people are done after the fourth no. Well, let's not be done, okay? Let's have somebody consistently continuing to do that, okay? I have closed deals this year that were in our nurturing pool for quite a while and had multiple rejections, but we don't necessarily stop following up in one way or another between drip emails and phone calls and other tools that we actually use. So having someone doing that for you though, because you might, you might be more inclined to give up on the first rejection because again, you log the lid, there's almost so, so much time, energy, and focus you can give by having someone else that's just doing that all the time during business hours when banks are open and investors want to be on the phone with, with your company, they're doing that consistently. Those of you that are trying to balance another career or an, a job or another business, I mean, seriously, banking hours are banking hours. Do you want to talk to somebody important? Well, they may not be in the office at the time that you're home and can make calls. But having a virtual assistant on the phone all day for you during banking hours is a game changer. All your follow-up automations, seriously, I love these stats again. It takes an average of seven to 12 touches to turn her to lead. 70% are closed in follow-up, right? But again, how many of you can actually do that? How many of you are gonna call one lead 12 times, right? You say you're going to, but the reality is I love all of you, even though I don't know you, I'm gonna know you, I love you, but it's just, it, it's something we always drop the ball on. I'm just as susceptible to this, right? I do get busy, I do get behind, but because I know that the money is in that process, I'm going to outsource it and give the responsibility and accountability to a highly trained and skilled individual to do it consistently for me. Social media marketing. Somebody mentioned that, that they were looking for somebody to assist with marketing. OMG, okay? Um, social media, it can be so time consuming and somewhat frustrating. But again, you can have all of it done by a virtual assistant, keeping you present and active online, automating it for you, right? Um, they can be doing your daily posts. They can be following up in the, in the comments with people as if it's you, avataring for you, or, or, or as your team and company assistant, however it is that you want to structure that. They can be creating content for you, curating content for you, right? There's so many things that virtual assistants can do for you in the world of marketing. We heavily, heavily rely on virtual assistants for this because again, consistency is everything in marketing. Consistency is more important than creativity, to be quite honest. And it's difficult to manage consistency when, again, we get busy in our business, busy in other things and, and handling reactionary things in our business that sometimes falls to the wayside. It's so super important. And social media is one of those platforms where people are going to go look for you first. In fact, statistically, or just facts, they're not gonna to go to Google you first anymore. They go look for you on social media first. That's where they look. So what are they going to find? And even if they do Google you, guess what happens with Google now? The first set of search results with Google are your social media platforms, right? They are considered relevant content to Google. 
And so if you're not putting up consistent, fresh content on your social media platforms, LinkedIn, especially for those of you in note investing, then people are going to go there and they're not going to feel that you are what you say you are when you contacted them. And they will be out of rapport with you, even at an unconscious level, not even understanding cognizantly why they feel out of rapport, but simply because they went there, they, you said you were something, they went to go look that up and they don't see any kind of presence or consistency behind your message and you could lose out on that opportunity. So how do you combat that? You have a virtual assistant doing that for you and creating consistent presence. This is the one th this is one of the most valuable things I want to bring it back to that slide there. Uh, Amy is I gave Jason basically, okay, here's what I want to have happen. So I gave her access to my LinkedIn. She logged in. She took articles, she found articles, she tweaked them. She logged into my Canva account and created infographics that looked a whole lot better than I did. She then went to Buffer and went and scheduled it all on the schedule that I wanted, which went to Facebook, which went to Twitter, which went to Instagram, which went to LinkedIn. I just gave her a set of directions and she, the beautiful thing is it was all done. And people are like, oh my God, you're everywhere, Scott Carson. And I'm sitting there chuckling to myself like, yeah, I am, but am I really, <laughs> you know? Okay. I love, oh my gosh, I had to say something. So like, I'm not, like people will say to me, you're on social media all the time. And we have a lot of different platforms that we're running. And I'm like, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> um, or people will message me and I'm like, I'm not, I don't reply is my VA, right? Like, you literally can have them do everything. So I love that she's just managing that for you. Now I'm gonna highlight something though. I'd like to put a little balloon around something. You did take the time to create for her instructions right what your goals were for her to achieve for you what those daily uh tasks would be and what you considered as measurables for uh, measuring her performance so i will say for all of you guys you know you are going to want to do that with your virtual assistant you can't it's not car you know you just don't say oh hey i have one and then disappear and and just expect that they're going to manage everything without your input so you do want to train them give them your input and especially in marketing you want to make sure that they really understand your brand message they really understand the intent of what you're marketing for and so spending a little time with them to make sure for your company right they understand the pre-trainings on, on what your what your goals are in, in your business potentially but they're still going to need to work with you and scott's done really well of working directly with his virtual assistant to have that beautiful synergy now happening um my favorite part though is the consistency side because what you would just said too right literally guys is so cool like i will wake up i kind of open one eyeball in the morning and i'll go and check some of the platforms that we have and i'm like oh Look at that really cool post and and I'll, I'll even like i've done this so many times i'm like that's really great content that's an awesome image right and then all of a sudden i'm like oh that's us <laughs> and i didn't do it right the virtual assistant did it but i was like but it caught my eye as if i was the consumer for a minute like and it's so cool because i'm like oh wow how nice is that that we have all this content going out for us and i'm not the one having to do it i'm not having to get up at four in the morning to push a bunch of content out because then i got to go to work to my nine o'clock appointments and or whatever else is happening that day literally can give it to someone else and have consumers just like me out there stumbling into that the way we want them to so they can um you know match our intention and want to do business with us so focus on your income producing tasks get things like social media marketing off your shoulders so so helpful you know, and the beautiful and the beautiful thing too is i, I want to bring this up is is that communication you can't go dormant at all because that, and that's the biggest mistake i hear from people, oh, I hired a VA. Well, how much did you, I mean, yeah, they're trained, they know, but they want to hear that feedback. They want to see, yes. am I doing this right? And people get upset, well, they didn't do it right. Well, you didn't train them right. You didn't <laughs> give them that, you didn't tell them exactly what you liked. And, and it's not going to be perfect at first. There was chores along the way, like, okay, I want you to tweak this a little bit. Oh, I like that image, but let's change the colors up a little bit. Or I'm out and about and I can send an image via text message or WhatsApp and it's, I get back in the next day while I'm asleep and she's gone and fixed it or tweaked it yeah. or something so like I, fixed appointments from a, a social media because she reached out individually looked like it was me talking to him but it was actually her that set those appointments 
like I love um, like certain tools, like, you know, vibrant like that. Like I can record myself. I don't have to like yeah. text or type it. I just literally talk the text, right? <laughs> right. And, and it's going to the VA, but I will tell you this. Yeah, you're right. You guys don't disappear on your VA. Don't be an, I, I know an absent, just like we don't want to be absent flippers. Those are my renovators that are on here. You don't want to be an absent business owner. We can't be an absent anything. You do need to be involved. And remember that your virtual assistant it's just like hiring someone in your office. And if you could imagine if you hired someone in your office, you'd say hello to them every morning. You'd say good night in the afternoon. You'd want to sit down with them and ask them about their life and what they're doing and what they're working on. You'd want to be involved with them. You're definitely going to want to affirm them. You're going to also want to measure their performance and guide them and critique where that's necessary. You would do that with an in-office employee. Your virtual assistant is an in-office employee. They just don't live here. Okay, so you want to treat them exactly the same, though. They thrive on affirmation and they thrive on, on being recognized for where they can grow. Give them things to grow into. Give them things to reach for. That, that's, that's, you know, 101 in employee growth, employee management, right? So that's the same thing. They are part of your team. And if you do that well, guys, you will have virtual assistants that will stay with you for years. Like literally, like we have clients that their VAs have been with them five, six, seven, eight years, right? Um, and so they really have become part of their family. In fact, we'll hear about clients who their VAs will fly over to, to meet them here in the United States because they become so close, they actually want to go hang out together. So you want to go to that level though, give them that affirmation, give them clear instructions, measure their performance, advise them and affirm them, critique them, help them grow, give them incentives, do all those things, just like you would someone sitting in your office. You know, I think about um, Preston, who you mentioned earlier, Preston's in my physical office. Well, Preston and I eat lunch together sometimes. Preston and I have, we, 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 we talk to each other. I know things about Preston's life. I also know things about my personal assistant who's a virtual assistant. My personal, personal assistant, I have a personal, personal assistant. I have assistants for other things I do too, but I have a personal, personal one. And I know things about his life. By the way, guys, he lives in the Philippines, all right? So we're never in the same place at the same time, but he does an amazing job, amazing job managing my crazy life. All right, so I, I threw this in this slide in here as an example of like a content calendar. So uh, Scott was talking about how he gave instructions to his virtual assistant. Like this is an example of one way I might instruct a virtual assistant from um, on how to put content out for me, right? And this is something that you guys can have as a resource, um, this, sort of, this sort of structure. So the VAs know what to do. You know, maybe Mondays is every a certain type of uh, posting, and every Tuesday is a certain type of posting. It helps them and guides them as to what to check off and what to do, so they don't wake up themselves every day going, "Oh, I have this huge mountain in front of me of social media marketing, which is just so broad." And instead, they can wake up every day and they know exactly this is what I do on this day. This is the type of content I'm looking for. Or this is the type of content I'm creating, and they can dive into it and have much much better results. Um, so. Um, hugely helpful to give them something like this. Um, and Buffer, you mentioned. So I love Buffer. Um, just to bring that up again, there are other tools like Buffer. Buffer enables you to schedule posts out on all of the different social media platforms. Only a couple of the platforms, Instagram being one, where you have to actually push the post through. It'll it'll notify you. Um, but it's all pre-scheduled, so you could actually have um, a virtual assistant in one week of the month create the content for the entire month, or um, they, they could for a whole month create the content for an entire year. Right. And now the rest of their time can be doing other types of marketing for you. And the content's just happening consistently without them having to create it daily. Um, it's something else to think about. Um, I have um, a virtual assistant for one of the things we do, and they happen to actually work on Sundays. And on that day, they're creating the content for the week. Right? That's just for the week. It's done ahead. And then that means during the weekdays that they work for us, they're doing other tasks that are important, that are good weekday business hour type tasks for us. Um, Managing your email broadcasts, same thing. They can be sending out all of those for you and pulling reports for you as to the click-through rates, all kinds of things that you want to know, and tracking where all of your marketing is working for you. Like those KPIs are important, right? How about, and, and by the way, how many of you don't track your KPIs when it comes to marketing? Because you, again, you get busy and you're in all the other reactionary parts of your business and you don't take the time to, to put that somewhere. Well, have your virtual assistant do that. Right? And if they're doing a lot of your marketing and they're also the ones that are communicating and interacting as a team with a lot of your leads, they're gonna have, they're gonna be the best people to track that. 
they're going to be the best people to ask, hey, how did you find out about us? Where did you see our information? And actually tracking that so that you know where you're having the most bang for your buck in your marketing, right? Have them managing all of your campaigns, all of it, all of it, all of it, and reporting for you. Um, I One of my favorite things about our virtual assistants at Reva Global is one of my favorite things, and maybe it's just because I'm a little type A OC, but they every day give me a start of business report and an end of business report. And the start of business report is a report on these are the things I'm going to be focused on today. These are the things I'm doing today. These are the things I'll be measuring today, whatever it is that I have set out as instruction. At the end of the day, I get an end of business report and they tell me all the things that happened that day. And certain days of the week, they're giving me weekly and monthly and quarterly performance reports on things like my KPIs. And so I get to look forward to that. And oh, by the way, let me remind you yet again, I'm sitting in an RV right now, but I could get on my phone right now and I could look at the actual call performance reports and marketing KPI reports for the last month, last week, last quarter, or just today by simply just opening up my phone. So to sum it all down, this is what we do. We focus on what we do best and we outsource the rest. That's what I want for all of you guys. You know, what are your most important revenue generating activities, your most important decision making activities? What are the things that only you can do that couldn't be done by someone else? That's all that you should have on your plate. Everything else, get that off your plate. All those other hats you're wearing, give them to virtual assistants and simply manage the results that they get for you versus you trying to do all the things and wear all the hats, right? That's the old, you know, the, the phrase that, you know, you taste two rabbits, you won't catch one. Okay, well, welcome to business growth. It's nearly impossible to scale without automation, outsourcing, and delegation. All right. And if you took my, I teach a course on efficiency and I tell people first you eliminate all the things you shouldn't do. Then we figure out what we're going to automate with technology and we outsource to highly skilled trained virtual assistants and all that should be left is only what we would have to delegate to somebody in, in our physical office, right? Obviously, winterizing one of my rental properties is probably not going to be done by a virtual assistant, okay? Um, obviously, there are some things that have to be done by somebody on the ground. But everything else can be done by somebody virtually. It's really, really powerful. Um, we have thrown this slide in here too, uh, emailing special asset managers. Guys, this is huge. Again, I'm, what I'm highlighting here is that it can all be done for you and your VA is gonna report to you how many people they got in touch with, how many responses they got, what was the click-through rate, you know, how many people actually asked for more information. Huge, right? So here's the thing. If you're even slightly now intrigued, curious, or even like you're like the you're you're you've got an itchy trigger finger to push the easy button right now and say I, I want to be a yesterday. If you go to that bit.ly right there on the screen, right there is a, a quick landing page. Just go there, throw in your name. I think ask for your name and your email and your cell phone. That's it. You can go right there, put that information in. It's going to pop a calendar up automatically. Grab a 15 minute session with our intake team. We have one of the most talented intake teams ever. And by the way, they're all virtual assistants too. They're amazing. They'll ask you some initial questions to kind of get a, a, a solid feel of where you're at in the process of, of needing a virtual assistant and kind of what it is that you want them to do. Now, if you're a little stumped, right? Obviously we gave you lots of things here to support your note investing business and other things that they can be doing for you. But if you'd like some even additional ideas of what you could outsource, you can download that 100 tasks virtual assistants can do for you PDF on that page. Go through it with a highlighter or, or whatever, red pen, and just circle and highlight all the things that you're like, wow, man, that's time consuming. Something I get frustrated when I do it. I didn't know a VA could do that for me. You'd be shocked and surprised from bookkeeping to video editing to podcast syndication to, to uh, you know, graphic man graphics management to, I mean, there's just so many things that they can do for you. And so go through, take things off your plate so that you can do more of what you set out to do in the first place. If you've invested in yourself and invested in this program to make this a, a, a big win for you and lots of dollars in the bank account for you, then give yourself this gift for you too, of it not being all on your plate so that you could actually get the results you set out for in the first place, okay? Don't be frustrated, get results. Results feel good, feel a whole lot better. 
So go to that link, schedule a 15 minute session um, and our intake team will, will jump all up and down to help you. Um, the next step, so I always like to set expectations is after you talk to intake, then HR will reach out to you and they'll also ask you a few questions about your VA because they're the team that's gonna go out into the pool of talent that we have to select the right VAs for you to interview, right? That way you're not interviewing hundreds of VAs, you're not wasting a lot of time chasing people down for interviews. And then you end up interviewing people that don't work out or they don't show up. Uh -uh. We handle all of that for you. It is the most streamlined and efficient process ever. I'm sure Scott can speak to that. And then they'll do the work to select, help you select the right VA. And then our client service managers and operations team are jumping in with you and you'll get to meet them too. And they're helping you launch off with that VA and helping you with engagement with them and engagement throughout their entire tenure. Um, the entire time that your VA is hired by you, there's a client service manager and an operations team that's checking in with you and checking in with your VA all day long, every day, to be sure that everything's working smoothly and you're getting results and they're getting results and everybody is, is working well together. So it becomes this amazing process. You're not even getting just one VA when you hire a VA, you're actually getting a whole team. So I look forward to meeting as many of you in the process and um, I'm open to any questions that you guys have. I love it. And I have to echo that. It was one of the easiest ways because if you've, I've had in-person staff before where you're going through two or three questions, you're interviewing people or people don't even show up to the interview without calling you. You know what I mean? Then yeah. you're, you're paying, you don't get it. Then you're paying a, a, a wage or they, oh, I don't want to work for you because I, I, you know, I make more flipping burgers. I'm like, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. We got a question on here. Let's talk a little bit about that kind of that investment in someone's business when they when they're making when they hire a VA, Amy, you want to talk about that kind of because yeah. they had a question from somebody about the, the price of this. Okay, so so specifically to price, let's talk about that. Um, and I want to say something. I love that you said investment. So just give me permission for just a minute, all everybody. Um, I am very anti using the words spend or cost um, because when we look at things as a spend or cost, we look at them as a loss. But that is not what we do as investors, right? Everything that we do is an investment. Everything we do is an investment for an ROI, right? That's what we're looking for. You know, if I take a, a breath of a deep air right now in my lungs, I'm investing in myself to have oxygen to serve the rest of my body. Like everything's an investment. Everything I look at, I look at it in that capacity. Virtual assistants are an investment, okay? So you're going to have the investment of the VA and then it's, it's for, on you, with working with your VA to set out to have specific results that you want for that VA's time, effort, and energy into your business, okay? So the, the um, investment with Reva Global is that you'll select a virtual assistant or two or three or four, whatever it is that ends up working for you. They works either 20 hours or 40 hours per week. Those hours are dedicated to you. They're not moonlighting for anybody else. They are working solely for you. There's no four or five clients at once that they're they're juggling and um, those are dedicated hours. Okay. So you can have one, an, a VA that works for 20 hours. You can have two VAs that each work 20 hours. You can have a VA that works 40 hours. You can have two VAs over 40 hours. Um, a 20 hour a week virtual assistant, it runs 1060 an hour. A, a 40 hour virtual assistant runs 960 an hour. And to, as an added benefit to you, we're managing all of the payroll process and all of that. So you're just paying that flat amount. You're not dealing with any payroll issues, HR issues, benefits, we cover those. We handle all kinds of things for our virtual assistants. And in fact, from a benefits perspective, we treat our VAs so well in the industry that we have massive waiting lists of talent to be on the Reva Global um, uh, roster because we give them health insurance and we give them all kinds of amazing uh, programs to, for their families, credit repair programs, programs for them to qualify for a mortgage for their home, um, student loan programs. We have all these things because we wanna take care of them. Family first is one of our core values. And we wanna take care of them and the better we take care of them, the better our clients have as an experience. You have a better longevity experience with your virtual assistant because they don't want to leave Reva Global because we treat them so well and in the industry so much better than what's out there. So you end up with a VA that's committed and dedicated to you long term, as long as you treat them well too. So, um, so that is the investment: nine sixty for forty hours a week, ten sixty an hour, or twenty hours a week. And I should tell you, you cannot hire somebody a college educated perfect person to fit what you're doing for anywhere close to that anywhere in the united states i don't care what part of the united states actually a lot of other countries too can get that 
there for you. And this comes from somebody who's had four full-time people working 40 hours a week, one person handling market, one per person handling bank phone calls, another doing due diligence on stuff like that. This yes. was an eye-opening thing to, to help you guys. Now, David asked a question. David says, are there a minimum number of weeks that we'd have to sign them up for? Okay, forever, so, David. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you actually want to go into this with the intent of having a forever hire. Okay, no different than if you hire someone in your office. And we are not a contract for hire virtual system service, right? Um, there are things like that. Like you can go to fiverr.com and hire someone to do a specific task once, right? Um, we're not that. So this is these are people who are going to become a part of your team, a part of your family long term. Okay. Um, I want to highlight something that you just said a second ago, because I just think it's worth saying. Um, from from a, a um an investment perspective, right? I one time too had four four people helping manage our blogs at the time we had a lot of video and online content blogs and I had four full-time employees and so my overall you know load my payroll load per month if you could imagine was high and two of them had graduate degrees I mean these people they were expensive so I'm going to use that word that I don't like to use right um I was able to replace that entire team with virtual assistants for 20 percent of what I was paying Wow. So that's an 80% savings for the same result. Um, I, we, I have one of my virtual assistants that works on my cold calling team. They, they have a graduate degree, right? I mean, like, we don't think about that sometimes. Sometimes we just don't think in our minds, you know, we, we're, we're, we think about our, our own backyard. Well, everywhere in the world, people have the opportunity to be educated, right? Um, so you may have people who literally, like I said earlier, have more education than you. <laughs> um, and for such a, a, a deep uh, a difference in, in expense, for a, in a local hire than there, and I, I'm with you. I, I'm 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 triple a VA cost in my market to hire um, somebody for the same role. Then you're looking at also payroll taxes and other benefits that we're, we're not covering covering that in that hour. Yep. The 960 or 1060 an hour. Uh, one other thing. I wanted, one thing I also wanted to throw on there. I mean, it's it's all about what you want them to do. It's all yeah. about. Here's the biggest thing too is think of the opportunity cost of what you're not getting done right now. <laughs> yes. That's, you know what I mean? If you're doing $10 an hour jobs, you're making $10 an hour. Right. But if, you're, if you want to make a hundred grand in a year, you need to be doing, basically take a hundred grand divided by 50, it's $2,000 a week. That's uh, 40 hours, that's $50 an hour. You need to be doing $50 an hour jobs or greater. Anything below that, you're not going to hit your goals. Right. Okay. Go people ahead. do it all the time though. I see people yeah. do it all the time, right? <laughs> like, um, and, and it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy because there's this very common sense dissonance to, I want to make this much money, but I'm doing this over here that's never gonna get me that much money, right? Like acknowledge that for yourselves, guys. Best gift you can give yourself sometimes as entrepreneurs is to, is to answer the, is to ask the hard questions and be willing to listen to the hard answers. And yeah. the hard answer may be you're, you're holding yourself back. The hard answer may be that you're just wasting your own time and you're not going to move the needle forward if you don't allow yourself to have your focus be on the highest revenue generating activities and all the other stuff I know by someone else. Like ask yourselves the tough questions and then surrender to the outcome. Mm -hmm. Got a, a couple of comments on here. John Philippi says, besides my real estate business, I also have a need of a VA for my landscaping business. Outdoor yes. LLC. I need a VA to call homeowners to see if they need artificial turf, papers, BBQs, et cetera. This is something they can easily do, right, Amy? Absolutely. You know what? I actually love that you asked this question. Okay, everybody that's listening to this today. I mean, we, we, we came into this talking specifically about how VAs can help with your note investing business. But the reality is, okay, that you may be doing other things that you're holding on to that you got to do or whatever that are not allowing you to work on your note investing business so why don't you yes automate and outsource those things right um i remember once we had a chiropractor and the chiropractor was struggling to get his real estate business off the ground and it's frankly because he was so in the weeds in his chiropractic business he had no time for his real estate business so once i suggested well hey here's all the things that they can do for your chiropractor business. So like with your landscaping business, they, they could make uh, appointment confirmation calls. They could do bookkeeping for you. They can do those, those survey or uh, research calls, um, all kinds of things. Absolutely. And then that frees you up so much to be able to focus on your investment business and, or also will put more revenue in the, in your, in your engine to be able to hire more support, even for the investing business. So yes, absolutely. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> I Sean asked a question. How soon can an assistant start after strategy session? And, I, I, and I'll answer that question pretty much uh, within a week if you need it to, because basically you're going to set up a strategy session. You're going to talk with somebody over at Riva. You're going to talk through things. They're going to give you some resumes to look at, and then they're going to schedule a couple phone calls with the two or three or four people, the resumes they pulled. So you can see if it's a fit. If it's not a fit, they'll get somebody else for you. Yes. And, and go and, from there. And they will. And it is really that fast. Uh, the only time it's never, it's not that fast is if it's something highly specialized. Yeah. Um, but most of the time it's very, very swift. Our HR team, it, they're rock stars. But as I described earlier, the virtual assistants, they're out there searching for talent all the time without even a client to place them with, right? So they're already doing all this work to, to screen them, put them through proficiency tests, put them through the pre-training and so forth. So they have a very clear idea of what each virtual assistant is like. So there's no, there's no lag time, right? They can immediately go look in the pool and know exactly who's gonna be a good match. So yeah, generally same week. Um, you did make a point there about, you know, if you interview two or three that we'll give you in the first round, if, so if, the, if none of the three fit for you, we immediately and very swiftly set you up with another round of interviews, yep. right? Um, I will say the majority of the time, statistically, about a little over 80% people find the VA they want in the first round, okay? Um, and sometimes it's the very first VA they talk to, very, very much so. Um, and then the other thing, that just because it's a, you brought it up for me, um, once you hire the virtual assistant, and they start with you, and that's very much right away too. Generally, the VAs are immediately available um, for their hour blocks for you. Um, is they, I don't know, six months down the road, and you've built this great history with that virtual assistant, and something happens, life happens, right? And something could potentially happen to that virtual assistant. I mean, I reject that. I don't want bad things to happen to anyone, but if something did, um, you would be able, our team steps in right away to help fill with another virtual assistant. I mean, like immediately, we don't want you to have any rollover time. Like we try as fast as we can. We yep. set you up with interviews, the whole process, um, because it, again, it could happen no different than someone in your office that all of a sudden has to has to leave. So. Well, I, I want to I want to commend you guys on that because that happened with JC. Her father passed away, oh. and so she took a took a week to you know, do what you need to do when you have a, a, a family member pass away. You guys had you plugged somebody in with you. Let me know before she was even late and said, "Hey, so and so has just had an issue." Uh, we're going to have somebody filling in and plugging that spot for you for the next five or six days. And I was like, that's awesome. Great. You know, they they rocked and roll. It was, it was without a hiccup. You know, it wasn't like, oh, no, I got to go back and do that stuff now. No, they stepped in. It was like no waves. It was like dropping a pebble in the water and nothing happened. It was just this silk. It's awesome. And you know, the, to, I want to just, cause I got to give them a shout out, but it's our client service managers, HR and operations, those teams, they are rock stars. They really are. They're just amazing. They blow my mind all the time. I'm so super talented, so super committed to the core values of our company. So that's why it's so swiftly taken care of where you don't feel any ripple effects at all. Um, and they really do that. You guys, if you hire virtual assistants with us, you'll get to know your client service manager, your CSM, um, as well as your VA. Um, you'll really get to know them well, because they check in with you quite a bit they just want to make sure everything's good right um and they have they've worked with hundreds and hundreds of clients over the years so they also may have ideas for you for efficiency and things like that be open to their feedback right um your virtual assistant may by the way sometimes your vas will, will they'll blow your mind they'll be like hey i love that we're doing it this way i have an idea <laughs> um that we can do it and get more done for you and you're like oh my gosh thank you you know it's, it's awesome so it's it's not even i have sometimes have a better and i hate to say this and my people here might be listening but i sometimes have a better experience overall with virtual assistants that I've hired than people in my own office. So I'm no Preston. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. But it I'm is. We love yeah. Preston. I would like to clone Preston. I have a hundred of him. I would right. steal my Preston. But well, yeah. It's, it's, here's the thing. You've got some, you've got, yeah. I would agree to that because you've got people that are so excited to do something for you. I mean, they literally take ownership <laughs> of your businesses and it's a different, it's such a fresh breath of air versus, okay, you got somebody that shows up. Ah, I don't really want to be here. You know, you look at what you guys mostly would hire and it's going to be somebody new. It's probably going to, you know, the, the first time they get a higher price, they're going to leave your ass, which happens all the time. That's not the case for you. All the time. Ownership. Yeah. They love what you're doing. Um, yes, you can start with one. You don't have to start with three or four. Start with one to get the ball rolling on there. But it, it, they and literally do. They do take ownership. And it, yeah, I had some great suggestions. Uh, still getting great suggestions from the VAs. Um, oh. 
streamline things and save me money even on services that we're using for CRMs or marketing and stuff like that too. Yeah. And so they, they, they do love what they do, right? And, and we do all that added benefits as well at Reva. So they also love working for Reva. Like there's just so many things where, where again, we set out as a company to solve all the problems in the industry. So we said, what are the problems? Great, how do we solve that? So we did, right? So the VAs never really want to leave. They love their job and they love, 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 love that they have a, a job that in that part of the world too, pays really well yep. and is consistent. And a lot of them are working in, a, in a, an environment that's very safe compared to where they might be. I mean, there's just so many things. So they are so appreciative, so grateful, so excited to be challenged. And they like to be challenged too, by the way. They like they like to, they're, they're, these are educated people. They want you to push them and challenge them. Um, so it, it, it's just such a great experience. Uh, I, yeah, it, it's, it's hard to explain until you actually experience it, but um, go for it, dive in. You said, I mentioned hiring one VA to get started. Um, we have a lot of clients too that will hire one VA to get started and then they get that VA mastering what they're doing and ramp and they've got them solid, rock solid doing what they're doing. And then they'll scale their business by hiring another virtual assistant. But okay. instead of them training that virtual assistant, they have the first virtual assistant they hired train the new one. And so they become almost like a manager of a virtual assistant team for you. I mean, how cool is that? Now you're scaling without even adding to your plate training yet another team member because the other virtual assistant can do it for you. Well, here, here's the thing that I love. And we had a question from um, Tyshawn or somebody else who we'll get to in just a second is if you want to go from where you're at to making at least six figures start off with, you got to hire somebody. You yes. got to hire somebody to do it. That's the success. And here's the thing that's always blown me away. And I, you know, you've gone, you've spoken at a ton of real estate events. You've been to expos. You've been to these big conventions. And I always, I always crack up because when I was in the mortgage industry, I was hanging around uh, the Ron LeGrand's, you know, seminars <laughs> and stuff like that. I love Ron. <laughs> Ron's great, right? And yes. I, would, I would talk to people every week that would go from one event to another event. I said, hey, how was that last? He was always, oh, it's great. And I said, did you get some marketing? Yeah. And I, my phone was ringing off the hook with leads. I'm like, great. How this goes? Well, I don't know. I'm too busy to call them now. I have to go to another workshop. I can't call my leads. I'm like, oh my God, you just spent. Yes. 500, 1500, $30,000. And that's the same thing. We see that. And it's one of the big things with my coach and my telling people like, listen, you got to hire somebody. Yes. And it's cheaper than you think. It's worth not paying coffee for a couple of weeks uh, for you to get rocking and rolling. Um, Warren asked a question. What's the onboarding fee? You want to explain that, Amy? 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 Did I lose you? Oh, so we do have a, a place. We have a placement fee. Um, it's a one-time fee of $495. You pay it once and once only, meaning that if you end up hiring 10 virtual assistants with us, you don't pay it again. Um, it's a one and one-time fee. It is non-refundable um, if you've gone through the interview process. Although we wouldn't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that. It, 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 you're going to get your investment back, <laughs> okay? Um, so it's one-time, um, multiple VAs. If you end up interviewing, a, a, more than we wanted. I mean, if you interview nine, that is still the same placement fee. So yeah. here's the thing. Many of you guys had expressed interest in like, I need to find deals. I need to do due diligence. I need, I need to raise capital. Yeah. All the things that you really need are, can be handled by somebody else without you having to spend time doing it. Absolutely. Because guess what? How would you do them? I mean, you, you say that, right? Guys, how'd you do the property research? And every one of you are going to look at your laptop and be like, on my computer, <laughs> on my phone, then, okay, then why do you have to do it? <laughs> Somebody else can do that, right? It's 90% of what we do can be done by someone else. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. It doesn't mean you don't make tweaks. It'll mean you adjust things, but that's, oh, yeah. you know, you look at, if you look at what you want to get to and you, you have to think, start with the end in mind. I would tell you this, if you want to grow and do something big, raise capital, look, we are on the cusp of so many things taking place in the market right now. I mean, deal flow, non-performing notes, the banks at the end of July here, the end is near for this forbearance or to kick the can down the road that the government has done. Yeah. You know, you have to take advantage of the opportunities and now is a perfect time to get trained, to hire a VA who's gone, who literally has looked at the videos. We've given them the videos, we've walked them through this stuff and gave Reva permission to use it to help train your guys' VAs for you for the specific strategies. Amy, you and your whole team come from years of being investors yourself and short sale yeah. negotiations and, and 
Yes. Close calls. This is not uh, just overnight. You were talking, you guys have decades of experience with your team. We do. And that's actually another thing that makes us so unique in the industry is that the company was created by people who do the business just like all of you. Right. Oh. We're actually in the business. So when we say we were solving problems, well, it's because we were experiencing those problems in our own businesses. Um, and we have similar goals and we have similar struggles when it comes to scale and comes to tracking KPIs and all those things like we're doing them in our own business. So um, we have a very different look at things and we understand what we would like virtual assistants to, to know to be good hires for us in our real estate entrepreneurial ventures or and I want to cover this entrepreneurial ventures right um the most common things needed so um this is not just some company again like a warehouse of resumes or just some some guy who had an idea to sell a widget okay that's not what we set out to build with Riva global and so and we've accomplished that we've accomplished where you're going to bring people in that are pre-trained highly skilled love their job love this company and will end up falling in love with you and you them to have amazing results um so give it a whirl give it a try if you know that you are ready for that investment and you know you have some goals you want to crush, you're ready to do it. Well, instead of being frustrated about it, the needle not going as far forward as you want it to now, start making it go forward with a virtual assistant. 15 minute strategy session, see what they can take off your plate. Yeah, exactly. And David, David asked a question. Would you confirm again you've actually got videos for the VAs to be trained by your methods with the intention of helping us do that? Yeah, I literally <laughs> sent over, you guys have seen me go through yeah. the finding. IRA investors on the county record. I sent Bob and the team and Amy and the team over there that exact video. You I, have it. You have it, exactly. I pulled it over, I sent it over. The whole like marketing, I mean, they have their own marketing account they've done for years, but I'm like, hey, here's a 30-30 matrix for the activities that your VAs could be doing for it. Here's the finding asset managers on LinkedIn and the email blast. I literally sent them the specific things. Yes. So, it, it, I mean, I, it's literally, that's why I brought it on. It's like such a valuable thing to make it work for you guys. So, no, so, no so, so, so to kind of say something to you guys, like when you um, go through the 50 minute strategy session thing, when you do that, tell the intake team, they're, they're amazing. Tell the intake team, you are specifically wanting someone to, to work your note investing business with Scott Carson. Like just say that. Okay, um, because then the HR team is going to select those VAs that have already probably listened to all of that pre-training material, or at the least they know that their skill sets match what all of that is, and then they, your VA can go access all of those pre-trainings ahead of working with you, right? This is already in our system, and all the VAs have access to our education platform that they have to go through and be tested on and everything, and all of those trainings are hosted on that platform. So all you have to do is, is, is make sure that your intake knows that, HR knows that, your CSM knows that, and the VAs will absolutely have access to that training material. You know, if you have to do something else, like start cold calling people to put in barbecues or something else, that's a different thing. <laughs> it's a different thing, but you know what? They can the do all that for you. Right, it's the same types of activities. I'm like, seriously, so like the guy with the landscaping business, absolutely. Could you have a VA make cold calls to survey people's interest in, in turf management or whatever that you said? Um, absolutely. Right. It's, it's still the same skill set as someone cold calling homeowners to see if they're interested to sell. OK. And so when you tell the intake team, I want someone to make outbound cold calls for me to survey interests. That's what skill sets on a personality profile and experience and background they're going to look for to match with you. OK. Um, so, you know, so just be very um, communicative with the intake team. Like just this is what I want. This is what I want to accomplish. Our intake team is very talented. They know how to listen to what you're saying to kind of help guide what type of VA direction to go. They may even advise and say, well, I think that could be 20 hours a week, or I think, you know, that might be two different VAs. Maybe you do two 20 hour per week people. I say that only because like we will sometimes have someone who's, who comes to us that says, I want to have um, data entry and research done, but I also want someone who is a, a rock star, salesperson, cold caller. Well, that's not always the same personality types, depending on how deeply you need those things done, right? Um, so the intake team asks very good questions to elicit where you are in your business and what it is you're looking for. So we get you the right match. I Make love it. Hmm? I love it. I love it. I love it. You got to think about this too. Um, depending on when you have them work for you, you may go to sleep at night and wake up. If you gave them the list of IRA investors in the counties that you like, they could literally have the full list for you. Yeah. Name, phone numbers, mailing addresses. 
They could even do a mail merge for you so that all you've got to do, and they could probably even email it to FedEx office for you. So that all you got to do is pick up the letters and stuff the envelopes to ship it out to the IRA investors. Or, you know, they've pulled a list of people who have bought a CFD in four or five counties and pull those entities and track down that person's phone number or email address, even email them, see if they have anything available or looking to sell stuff. And now you've got deals in your inbox to evaluate. Listen, you know? I, have, I have a VA that my acquisitions guy and my, my physical office, um, this week started something with him where he's going into records and his, his task is to pull no less than 100 potential prospects per day for us. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. And he's going into their tax records and he's pulling 100 a day. Do you know how long that would take me? I would never get to it, first of all, because I'd have five other things happening around me. Um, and so I know, I don't have to blink an eye. I have certainty and, and confidence and know I have somebody else putting 100 new potential prospects into our funnel every single day, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so think about that, guys. Think about, like, for instance, how much money you will make on a transaction. Like, think about the, the net goal that you have on a transaction, right? Then think about the investment of the VA, right? I have a, a client, now this isn't note investing specifically, but I have a, a, an agent client who had generated a ton of records, ton of leads, um, well, a couple, you know, thousand. Um, he wasn't doing any follow-ups to them. He just wasn't, he didn't have time. He was managing clients, he was going here, going there. He's also a father and a husband and all these things. So he wasn't doing the work to follow up with people. And so he's working with me as a coaching client. And I just simply said, listen, I said, don't come to your next session until you've and implemented a virtual assistant to do follow-up for you. And he resisted and he resisted and resisted, but he finally pulled the, pulled the trigger and he did it, right? And he comes to me smiling from ear to ear 30 days later, because he's like, oh my goodness, that virtual assistant reached out to people. One of the people they reached out to that I would have never had the time to get a hold of because they had to keep calling him and calling him to get a hold of him. And then they had texts with him. And it was like this whole coordinating thing to get this person on the phone. The VA finally got the person on the phone. That person transacted in 30 days and he made enough money on that transaction to pay for the use of that virtual assistant for an entire year. Yeah. So basically he's having a free helper for a year off of one transaction that he would have never touched had he not had the VA doing it for him. Mm -hmm. uh, so Terry asked a question here. Do you have VAs trained in other software like FreedomSoft, Prop yeah. and Connected Investor Software? So the most commonly used platforms, we do have some pre-training information on those, right? Real Flow, FreedomSoft, PropStream, Podio. Like we have some just pre-training type stuff so that the VAs have a fairly good idea. But here's the thing, those platforms are commonly used by real estate investors, right? So on the experience list of the virtual assistants is oftentimes where they've worked for a previous client in one, maybe at another company before they came to Reva or even with a client at Reva for a long time. And now they're back in the availability pool and we'll know what type of software they were using for those clients. So they may have actively been using FreedomSoft for a previous client. So if you'll tell the intake, intake team that and the HR team when they interview you, they interview you, right? Um, let them know that. So that will be something to check off as a, as a highlight item, right? That they already have previous experience using that particular platform, right? So absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the great questions is what, what are you using? So like Infusionsoft or Keep or MailChimp? Yeah. All those common and things on there. All those common things. But here's something else. I just have to say this too. Guys, if you are using something that a VA is not, it's not very common. For example, I actually use something that's not common called Streak. We use Infusionsoft, well, Keep now as well. Um, I use KB Core in my brokerage business. Like we have different platforms. Um, but for instance, Streak was not something that's very commonly used. But the thing is, guys, these are really awesome employees <laughs> that you're getting. And you know what? If you give them the instruction to go learn the platform, they will. They'll get on YouTube and lynda.com and all those places to find all of the video instruction that's out there for everything nowadays um, to learn it. If that's what you set them out as their accountability to do for you, okay, then they will master it for you. They, they're, they're not going to sit back and do it lightly, okay? They're going to go master it. And so honestly, I have a virtual assistant on my team that really knows how to use it better than me at this point. <laughs> Well, like, that's the thing. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. Is I, one of the things I, we like to do is I'll jump on Zoom. If I'm doing something new or something I'm not familiar with, or it's, it's a, I'll actually record it as I'm going through to train my VA. 
if it's on something that they're not familiar with, something that we've added. You know, you got to spend some time on this. Like Frank, you guys a question uh, about Twilio and HubSpot out there. If your VAs are assisting you, know, that would be a question you want to ask in your 15 minute um, strategy session out there. Yeah, and ask, ask, just ask them. HubSpot's pretty common or get, becoming more common. Um, I'm saying no, Julio. Um, so yeah, just ask, right? And then again, too, make that an assignment for the VA. If the VA, for instance, has skill sets that show that they're really good at using platforms like that, then don't hesitate to hire that VA. Just have assign them to become good at that platform, right? I mean, it's, it's just that simple. So um, just work with your VA. You mentioned recording. I, I It's now a habit for me. Every time I do anything, I record myself doing it. And then we just archive those. Like it's become habit now because I know that if I, once I've recorded it, the VA never has to come back to me and ask me how to do it. Instead, they just go reference the, the video that already exists. Um, I'll give a little tip to everybody, a little golden nugget from Amy. Uh, make your training videos like that anywhere from three to 10 minutes. Um, try not to go past 10 minutes and make them very topical specific for something because here's what's cool. You might change a part of a process and if you record the whole process and it takes an hour and then you change one part of the process, you'll have to re-record that whole hour. So instead, record the process in steps. And then if step three changes, then all you got to do is re-record step three in the training, uh, whatever you want to use. Um, so and I store all of mine. I use Kajabi and drop and um, um, sorry. Gmail, I, I, whatever, Drive, sorry, thank you, Google Drive, <laughs> brain fart there, but I use Google Drive and Kajabi is where I store my stuff for my VA to access um, as training modules or uh, how-to information and things like that. Um, I even did, for those my social media marketing people, right, I did a video that's me in my language talking about my brand. I did a video that's me in my language talking about the avatars of clients that we work with how I describe what our perfect client is, right? Why do I do those things? So the VA can truly install at a deep level an understanding of my business. No different than if somebody was in my office where they would be around our mission statement and our core values all the time, right? I give that same benefit to my VA. So they feel very, very connected to the mission and message of what our companies are about. Um, so I also give you guys that little tip, just do that. You'll, you'll appreciate it later. <laughs> Yeah. John, I, I don't know what Builder's trend is. If that's trending or as a software, that'd be a question you'd ask your onboarding. It's not going to be a question that Amy is going to go search research right now or anything like that. Yeah, and it's, it's software. I'm familiar with Builder's trend. Um, so yeah, same thing. I let your intake people know, and it's possible that the VAs would have experience, but Builder's trend is also something that if you use it all the time, do that process of recording yourself of exactly what you're doing, and the VAs will pick, on, pick it up real quick. Exactly. Exactly. Train them and then they'll be rock, off rock and rolling there for you. And cloning yourself, cloning yeah. yourself. Now, Amy, let's take it. Uh, we've, we've covered a lot of stuff here with everybody and, and everybody, you guys here, guys and gals on here. This could be one of the most powerful. I know David said like, oh, this presentation is worth the whole thing. If you haven't checked out and made an appointment or looked at that hundred task a virtual assistant can do for you, that's the tip of the virtual iceberg, really. Yes. It, it is a tip. Is. No, we I could mean, put 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 things on there. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but this will get you, this will get your creative ideas thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, and David, yeah, a mind opening idea. No, it's, it's a strategy for you. It, this is meant to be a tool for you. Many of you aren't even close to where you want to accomplish your goals. And that's part of it because it's you clogging up and you being a bottleneck in your success. And that we all are like that at the beginning. I said it before. Same here. I had to get over being a control freak years ago to get things yeah. done. It I, just did, I just did a video on my Facebook page about being a control freak a couple of weeks ago. Like I literally started out, I'm like, I have to admit something. I'm like, I I just, like you know, the first process of healing is to admit you have a problem. I am a control freak, <laughs> right? So yeah, absolutely. Sounds like we need to have like a uh, control freak anonymous Facebook <laughs> live or, or maybe you guys can talk about that in your, your the coffee hour tomorrow morning, huh? There we go. That would be great. <laughs> Love it. I, Pat would love that. Pat will run with that like crazy. Um, what Scott's mentioning, I'd love to invite everybody here if you can. We have a, every Friday we do live on uh, streaming on Facebook and YouTube. but also gets um, archived and syndicated other places. But we do something called Friday Coffee Break Unfiltered. Um, it is a an hour conversation of three different entrepreneurs with 
three different attitudes and ideas of things. Um, and we, we, we kind of, you know, hash it out on entrepreneurial challenges and issues. Um, people send their questions in. So if you go to askfcb.com, you can actually submit a question prior to the Friday Live and it might get answered live by us. I have I, I don't make any promises and I we don't mean to offend anyone by how we might answer it. Just take the answer as it is. <laughs> so, but it's fun. So. Always enjoyable Friday morning, uh, Friday coffee break there for you guys out there. Um, <laughs> Any other questions, guys and gals? We're coming about five minutes left with the, the Amy here for you. You want to ask her anything about the VAs, about things that she's doing, uh, anything else out there? If you've got a thing that you're struggling to get done yourself, throw it in the chat while we talk about that. Uh, Frank, it's, just go to Friday Coffee Break. It's just a, it's a, uh, a Facebook live stream or on YouTube for Friday Coffee Break, right, Amy? If you just uh, go Facebook Friday Coffee Break Unfiltered, probably the fastest place to find us. We do have a community group you can join, just join it, um, and you'll get notifications. Um, and Pat Precourt and Bob LeChance, or who are on that pod, uh, that Friday Coffee Break with me, um, two of the men in the world I admire the most, um, and two uh, great friends and mentors for almost 20 years. Um, absolutely love them both. So you also want to follow them. Follow Bob and Pat if you don't. <laughs> And give me a little bit of an idea. Let's throw this out here. I know Pat doesn't talk about it much, but if you guys are familiar with the little show called Flip This House and the guys, uh, what's what's the guy's name? What was that? Um, Stan, Paul, and JD? Yes, yeah, Stan Merrill's group. Patrick originally handled all the coaching for fans, uh, coaches years ago. It handled all the short sales on that stuff there. And so Pat's, yeah. Pat's a mentor and a good friend of me as well. I mean, I love I love talking with him. I never want to take a foregone from him because he's like made out of pipe. He's just so tight. You know what I mean? Well, he, so he used to own a gym called the cage. Um, yeah. so he's a little cage fighting. Um, he's a rugby player. He is tough and rumble. Um, and Pat is tough and opinionated as well. Um, but we, we, we always love Pat and sometimes his cantankerous self, but actually he really is one of the most uh, positive uh positive people you'll ever meet I, from a mindset perspective he will blow your mind in yeah. helping you think way past your own limitations to achieve results you didn't even know you were capable of that is his skill and his talent um bob lachance is the ceo of reva global um bob is an operations genius um he has one of those brains that just he just thinks in st structured operational org charts like that's literally how he thinks um i'm more of a creative i'm the wonderer and the creative and the the visionary kind of person that's why i'm in sales and marketing and brand building and all that because that's my passion um he is more of the operations guy and because of that he has excelled at everything he's ever done um if you really want to pick the brain I, I always tell him he can take a forest and whittle it down to a toothpick in one sentence um it's really hard to find people who can do that it's just an extreme talent um so as a triple as a trio um we are a pretty powerful group of coaches and all three of us do work as coaches and have for all of our careers and it's 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 because we all bring those different things to the table so um I, like, I think part of bob's strength too is being the ex-professional hockey player hockey players yeah. don't go where the puck is at they go where the puck is going to be yes. and that's one of the great conversations that led us to kind of all connecting together uh, a couple of years back was i've known pat for years pat made the introduction to bob i met bob through you and vice versa. And it's just really, it's, it's just a great thing. And, and I, that's why I have you guys on here. I think it's one of the most powerful sessions of all of Note Camp is taking that step to really decide that you want to do some things bigger than what you're doing. And the first thing I do is say, raise your hand. I need some help. And this is the best way to get help to take your, take your business to another level. Note camp is amazing. By the way, note investing is amazing. It's something that people just don't even realize you can do. And there's so many different directions within the world of note investing. Like it is when I learned about it years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Right. I think the hardest thing for me to get over in note investing was that when I bought a house, quote unquote, I got handed an envelope. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I want to go like knock down walls and like, you know, <laughs> I, I, where's my house, right? Exactly, right? Um, so that was probably the hardest thing for me to get past was that I wasn't actually getting a house. I was just getting this really pretty envelope, um, but I could get that envelope delivered to me anywhere I was. And isn't that really cool? So, um, so really amazing. And so this is an amazing program. This is such an amazing niche of real estate. It's such a powerful niche. Um, I love, love, love everything about it. Um, when you can be the bank and there's, you know, seven ways to Sunday, I can be the bank and, and all the th things, all the power I have have um just in that position you can be the most 
benevolent, most, most, I mean, it's just unbelievable things you can do. Um, so enjoy this niche. And I will, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is the most powerful part of the note camp. This is the most powerful thing you can do for yourselves, period, is to find ways to bring people in that are highly skilled and talented so that you can do more of what you love and do more of what matters most to you. Because some of you guys are sacrificing time with family and friends and your passions and your dreams because you're overwhelmed and overloaded in your business or in this this drive to learn this new niche or whatever it is that you're doing and so you're taking away from your life i call it life equity give yourself some life equity back right and the best way you can do that is to automate through talented skilled people who love working for you <laughs> so I mean, hire <laughs> people that are better doing the things that you want to do yes. <laughs> One of the best things you can do, delegated stuff there. Amy, thank you so much for coming on Deliver 200% as always. All right. Thank you. I'm so honored. You guys are awesome. All of you. Scott's amazing. You guys have a blast with this whole rest of this note camp. I'm a little jealous. I don't get to sit and listen to all of it. I'm going to go back and hopefully hear the recordings. Um, but you guys crush it. I love it. And I uh, hope to engage with me as many of you as I can that, that you need help. So we're here. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Thanks, honey. All right. Bye-bye.